Hi, this is TJR. And you know, the recent video that I did uh, where I discussed the resequencing of Led Zeppelin's Presence album uh, got me thinking about a couple things that I've always kind of known but never really talked about. And so if you are a musician and if you are releasing an album or planning to release an album, you might want to stick around and watch for a bit. Um, you know, if you play a live gig, you think about your set list and you think, okay, uh, what's the flow of the songs? You know, want to start off with a bang, of course, you know. Um, you want to kind of have your, your peaks and valleys, you know. Uh, you don't want to play like four ballads in a row. You might put your audience to sleep. Uh, similarly, you don't want to play a whole bunch of really, you know, loud and fast songs, you know, over and over, constantly, you know, back to back with each other without anything to break it up. And if you think about it, you should treat your album in a similar way. And you should treat your album not unlike a filmmaker treats a film or a writer treats a novel. I don't think I've ever mentioned it on this channel before, but my niece is an author. And uh, her name is Rosamond Hodge, and this is her second book entitled Crimson Bound. She has a third book that will be coming out very soon. And... Uh, she knows that we live in a society where distraction is everywhere. And so she employs a certain technique to uh, grab readership. And she knows that you might chance upon her book in the bookstore and that you might open it up and maybe read from the opening page. So she deliberately writes the way she does to get your attention, to grab your interest and to make you want to say, oh, I've, I've got to know what happens next. So you're going to buy this book and read it. And so I'm, and t as a demonstration, I'm going to just read to you just the opening first couple sentences in this book here. Here we go. In all your life, your only choice, Aunt Leonie said to her once, is the path of needles or the path of pins. Rachel remembered that the day that she killed her. So right there, She's grabbing your attention. And I've seen some albums do this. I've especially seen it with rappers who start not with a song, but with a spoken word piece, something to get your attention. I've seen concept albums do this. Now, I'm not saying every album should have a spoken word, but you want to try to, in some way, pace your album. You may say to yourself, I want to see a movie with some action in it. But now, imagine you go to a movie and it's nothing but action. You know, it's nothing but explosions and cars chasing each other and cars crashing into things and people shooting guns at each other and people yelling and screaming and things blowing up and, and running around and screaming for two hours. You'd be bored. You've got to have some human moments You've got to have moments that make you care about the characters. You've got to have quiet moments. You've got to have funny moments. Maybe you don't want to see an action film. Maybe you want to see a drama, something that you feel is deeper. But even then, there's got to be some tension that builds up. There's got to be some emotional passion that builds up. You know, maybe if it's a romance or maybe it's, it's, it's some uh, feeling of anger or hostility towards a character, you know, that's an antagonist. But there has to be something that excites you on an emotional level. If it's not going to have uh, a visual action, it's got to excite you inwardly. And there has to be pacing. It can't all be quiet dialogue or you'd get, once again get bored. And you have to think of your album, I think, not unlike a movie, not unlike a novel, not unlike the set list for your show. You've got to pace it. And, you know, I always say, Start off with a bang. Start off with what you think is your best song, you know. Now, of course, I understand if there's a concept album involved, you got to follow a certain story. But by and large, we're not all doing concept albums. But I always say, start with your strongest song first. Think about the peaks and valleys you're going through, you know. Um, you listen to You Choose the Joshua Tree. It explodes with, you know, the opening track, you know, where the streets have no name. Then it cools down a little bit for the next two songs. Then it builds back up again with Bullet the Blue Sky. Then it kind of calms down again. 
you know, with the final track running to stand still, that's side one, you know. Um, look at Elton John's, you know, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, side one uh, opens up, you know, with Funeral for a Friend, which in and of itself is this little epic. It starts very quietly. First, you just hear the wind blowing in the background and the, the chime bells ringing. And you wonder to yourself, what's going on here? You know, uh, kind of a mood's being set without any music at first. And then the organ comes in, you know, and it swells and builds up and reaches a climax. And then piano comes in. It swells up and builds to another climax with, as the whole band joins in. That song goes through a lot of changes before it finally, you know, fades out. Then Goodbye Norma Jean, more of a mid-tempo ballad. It's time to cool off a little bit here, you know. And then Benny and the Jets, you know, it just kicks into high gear again. And it closes out that side. And uh, I know we don't live in a world of album sides anymore, but even when you're making a CD, you know, 10, 11, 12 tracks, you've just got to think of that flow. And I think it's very important when you're trying to, you know, put together an album and uh, keep it, uh, have the tracks varied enough so that you keep the listener's interest from the beginning to the end. So maybe you grab, you know, the audience's attention with the beginning of your album by starting, you know, with a spoken word piece. Or maybe you do it by starting with some unusual, you know, sound effects. Or maybe you just do it by starting with just the best song you possibly can. But one thing you have to remember, how you start your album is just as important as how you finish it. So even if your album is not a concept album, it doesn't have any you know, specific storyline or thread running throughout the songs, you still want to pace your album sonically speaking, like a movie or like a novel. Hey, this is TJR. Thank you so much for watching. Tell me what you thought of this video and um, leave a comment, please. And I want to thank you for subscribing. And if you want more information about my niece's uh, books, uh, you can, of course, uh, find out about her at her website, rosamanhodge.net, and you can order her books at Barnes & Noble and also at Amazon.com. And thanks so much for watching. See you soon. Bye.